Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. So I have to apologize, I only arrived last night, so I have no idea what was going on the last two days. So I'll probably repeat a lot of stuff that you heard already. Um, so the most important part, as this is on tape, I mustn't forget my co-authors. This is the most difficult part because this is a joint band of women anthropology project. So this, these are five people. So whenever you see this thing, this means these people. And so this is based on work with them and then further work with Ayelle Lindenstrauss from Bloomington. Right, so first of all, let me start with some thing that might motivate you for listening. Um, we, we all know the, the trace maps to Schild homology and we know that's pretty lousy. So if we want to understand K-theory, then going to Hochschild homology is a, usually a bad idea, so you might factor over what's called topological Hochschild homology. And that's a better approximation. So, for instance, in cases where, where Hochschild homology isn't really even well defined because it's not a derived invariant, THH sort of helps you. For instance, uh, if you take the integers, then there's work by Backstedt and later Rockness showing that you, you hit things for every prime this map is actually subjective and it detects important classes so whereas in, on the level of Hochschild homology you, you don't see anything you tensor the integers over the integers so you create a lot of noise but it's trivial. Pardon? Yes. So this is the Z mod P that we all know and love. Yeah. So this is a good thing to do. So we might be interested in NTHH. Um, so, but then we might not be only interested in. We want to calculate it. But this is. I will actually do some new examples there already. Um, but if we step back, and even, even for rings, this has more structure. So even if you start with an ordinary ring as the integers, this is now living in the world of infinite loop spaces or spectra, if you want. So, so if R is commutative, and in case I forget this, everything I talk about is commutative today. This doesn't work if you drop this assumption then you get a strict ring spectrum here. And there's a version of, of K-theory for ring spectra. So you can iterate the whole story. You can, you can take your ring, form K-theory. This tells you something about the arithmetic properties of your ring. And then you can form yet another iteration. So we can iterate this. So you can form K of K of R. Well, you can form it, so why should you do this? Well, I'll tell you about this later. This doesn't fit in here. So, but if you write this down, this, this trace here has nice properties. So you can apply it inside and outside of this K factor. So you get a map to iterated topological Hochschild homology of R. And then there's old work already saying that this is actually just gluing copies of R to S1. So this is R tensor S1, tensor S1. And then abstract nonsense tells you that this is just tensoring now with a torus instead of a sphere. So suddenly, you have things to worry about. Uh, here now you have something with a genus, and so this is, has suddenly has some geometry that uh, you ha didn't have before. I mean, before we already exploited that the S1 here gives you a lot of structure on, on THH, 
allows you to form TC, topological cyclic homology, but this has even more structure. So, so but besides from being, being masochistic, why should you do this? Um, so, um, let me just mention two examples. And so the first is saying, well, it doesn't really matter whether you take the complex numbers. So if you p-complete k theory of the complex numbers at your favorite prime, then build k theory, well, Susland tells you that this is uh, little ku. So topological complex uh, k theory. So here you get, well, completed at p. I might forget this sometime. Uh, and, and this now is something that one can calculate. It's painful, but you can do it. Well, not everybody can do it, but Osoni Rocknos can do it. Uh, and so this can be done. And the, the important thing you see there is, sorry if this sounds discriminating, but things like the complex number lived down here in level, chromatic level zero, if you take homology with complex coefficients, this tells you something, but it uh, doesn't tell you a lot about stable homotopy theory. It's right at the bottom, KU, has chromatic filtration. One, whatever this means, it sees a tiny bit more, it sees, well, it sees more of the stable homotopy category. And then Osoni Rockmus actually established that you can place K of K U here. So I don't want to define what this means. This would take at least an hour. But if you've heard about elliptic homology, this is also placed here, so you can place topological modular forms here and things like that. So, so what does this do? It takes this thing of chromatic type 1 and promotes it to something of type 2. So this is sort of nice. So you get this redshift, uh, chromatic redshift. So this is an instance of chromatic redshift. Well then, if you say, well, the complex numbers are not that interesting from the point of number theory, um, yes, uh, so, but there's a th something further you can do. So here, um, I mean, for, for doing the calculation here, you have to assume that P is large, because at the low primes, you have some problems just doing the calculation. Um, here, the prime P and the other thing should be related so that Q generates the P adic units in a topological sense. So this is, they are not unrelated, but then you can form this, so you just take this finite field, P complete, K, take K theory out of this. And again, you see phenomena like this, and now I should try to spell his name in a correct manner. Um, so Gabe Angelini. Um, it, it's maybe a bit harsh to say this detects chromatic redshift, but what does it see? It detects some, let me be even less precise, chromatic type 2 elements. And I should also mention work by Eva Höning, one of the many people up there. She's a PhD student of Christian Osumni, and uh, she also worked on this, and they come to the same conclusion by completely different methods. So for the experts, um, Gabe showed that you see some elements of the beta family in there. And so he used some spectral sequence that he cooked up for this. Uh, 
thing. He, she used a different spectral sequence, and her approach is closer to trace methods. So, so what does this say? You see this redshift occurring, and you might be interested in this. So the hope would be um, that by iterating K-theory, well, if you do it once, why should you stop? Um, you might just say this might detect interesting things in the stable homotopy category. <coughs> so so there, there are some more concrete um, conjectures about this, what you should see. If you're interested in this, just Google chromatic redshift and you'll find something. So, but then the, the thing is, how do you calculate these things? How do you approximate these things? So everybody in this new room knows that calculating K-theory is hard. So how do you then calculate the approximation Well, and here, what you get is, if you do this n times here, you actually get an n torus. And then you all know that this has non-trivial attaching map, uh, maps in its CW structure. So the question is, how do you do this? But then often it turns out that this just splits and this looks as if this space only had trivial attaching maps. So what happens, quite often, it just bubbles off into spheres. So you need uh, you get a top one, and then you get stuff in the middle, and it just decomposes. So the problem of, of calculating this torus homology is sort of reduced often uh, to calculating homology of, or homotopy groups of things tends it with a sphere. Um, I should warn you that there are examples where this does not happen. A positive example where it does happen is the field, a prime field, everything is fine there. But if you take an innocent thing like a polynomial algebra over the rationals divided by square of the generator, this doesn't decompose. So that this is really, you have to be lucky, but sometimes you are lucky. I don't know. So, um, oh God, yeah. Uh, is it that happens if R is a finite field or is it a theory of a field? Um, the only general thing is, I know is if you tensor not over the sphere but over a field and then you take a Hopf algebra, a commutative Hopf algebra over that field, then there is work by Mike. They are, uh, Ajay's name is Ramados. And then there are two co authors of him. Um, oh, yeah. So they prove that in this case, um, you actually get um, that. In this case, you get higher order Hochschild homology, torus homology, but in the algebraic setting. And they prove that this is actually an invariant of the suspension of the space. But if you suspend the torus, all the attaching maps bubble off, and then you get it. But I don't know any other general result. So <coughs> we, are, we, we, try, we are trying to prove it, something. but. Um, <coughs> And the other point is Hopf algebras are rare in spectra. So, so 
So it's not quite clear what the right setting is for getting a splitting result. So, let me give you some background. Wh what are we talking about? Um, can actually give you the definition of these things. If you're not scared by smash products, then this is fine. So, I take a strictly commutative ring spectrum. And then, if I have a pointed say, finite simplicial set. Then I can form R tensor X. And this is a simplicial commutative R algebra, actually. And it's augmented over R if you're in the pointed setting. I can just write it down for you. So what you take is in degree n, you just take the smash product of as many copies of R as you have in your space. So, then if you want to, you can take geometric realization and this turns this into a commutative R algebra augmented over R. You don't have to. Right, so um, this works in, in this full generality. And let me just focus on the examples that I'll de deal with today. So, if I take the circle, then this has n plus one points. In the standard model, you can take more complicated simplicial models, but you don't have to. And if you take the easiest one, what you actually get is R tensor S1 is just the simplicial thing that you get by writing down the standard Hochschild complex and replacing tensor products with smash products. And so on. So this continues here. So, um, so if you take the geometric realization, then this is a model of THH of R if you mumble co-fibrant in something, but uh, th this is the right thing. So topological Hochschild homology is an instance of tensoring a ring spectrum with a pointed simplicial uh, set. So why should we stop at, at S1? Um, so example B is uh, just take a higher sphere and then you can form R tensor Sn. And I call this the higher THH of R. This is related to higher order Hochschild homology. So if all this says we are smashing over the sphere spectrum, it, you can also vary the ground ring. And if you vary it to arc over an ironberg maclean spectrum, you get just higher variance of Hochschild homology. And then the motivating example, of course, so let's uh, take this to be a torus. Then you get R tensor this torus. So there you get torus homology. So if I place a star somewhere, I mean the homotopy groups of these spectra, and they hopefully give us some information about K-theory eventually. I need two more variants. Um, because we want to juggle, so we want to juggle things between working relative to different ground rings. We want to play with coefficients, we want to play with the space. So we have 
coordinates and we want to play them off against each other. So I play this through with, with THH of R because this is probably the one that's most familiar. Um, so variant 1S. Um, place coefficients. This is why I wanted everything to be pointed. Um, so if I have an R module, I can just stick the module to the base point. Everything, every map is base point preserving, so this makes sense. And e.g. you get topological Hochschild homology of a ring spectrum with coefficients in an R module just by staring at the standard complex, but now with coefficients. So, and the second variant I need is um, I want to juggle things with respect to the ground ring. Um, so, the usual setting would be um, smash is smash over the sphere spectrum, but then you could have an intermediate thing here. So A should be a commutative R algebra. And then you can form everything relative R, meaning uh, you smash over R. So you take relative invariance. So in this example, this would give um, something like the Hochschild complex of an algebra oh, with respect to a ground ring, that's not the canonical one, or not the initial one, so I put it that way. So these are the variants I, I need. Um, let me just state some, some properties. So this is sort of playing with the algebra input. But now I have a second input, the space level, the, the, the level of the simplicial set. Um, So if I vary x, um, there are some properties this has. I already used one of them. Um, if I first tensor with x and then with y, this is equivalent to tensoring with x times y. Um, tensoring um, works well with pointed sums. But beware, this is not the disjoint union. They meet in a point, so they are smashed over a point. R turns over point is R. This is why I get this. In general, it works well with homotopy pushouts. And <coughs> in particular, what you get is that um, if you form the homotopy pushout, <coughs> of x with respect to a point, you get the suspension. So if you induce this up with r, you get the induced maps. And this works well with homotopy pushout, so this is r times a suspension of x. Do you think you yes. 
I want the base point because I want to be able to place coefficients, but I'm not working in the pointed setting. Yeah. So we have this. Um, so this actually, um, I mean, this is used now in, in many different contexts, like factorization homology, but this, this goes way back to early work in the mid-90s by people like, I mean, Rockness definitely did things on this, and so these are some properties that are natural, but they're actually true. So, so and this helps. So, so now we want to take the, the things we have and, and play with them to make things actually more amenable to calculations. So what is easier sometimes? If you work relative to the integers in algebra, this can be nasty. Sometimes it's way easier to choose a different ground rank, say a field. Things become easier. They might also become harder, but sometimes they become easier. So shifting from an absolute setting to a relative setting can improve things with respect to calculations. And so what I'll present now is sort of a mixture of changing the ground ring and playing suspension off against the unsuspended space. So now we are getting to juggling formulas. Oh, I raised the names, yeah. <coughs> well, yeah. So, what is the juggling? Um, so, the goal is um, relate um, uh, smash over nothing to smash over R and then relate tensoring with a suspension to tensoring with X but in a more civilized fashion than just forming this, this push out. Uh, a bit of notation uh, just to stay organized This is uh, the worst it can get. So you tensor over, you have M at the base point, you smash over R, you place A in everything that's not the base point, and then you form this simplicial gadget, and if you want, you take geometric realization. And uh, this is very close to what you do in Hochschild homology, so we like to call this little day construction. It all started with finite sets, so <laughs> this is just uh, an extension. Right. So, so what are the juggling formulae? Um, let me bombard you with three theorems, but I only will prove one of them. Um, so the first is... Um, If I have a cofibration and 
if I want to calculate relative, the low day construction relative to x over r, I can express this in two with, with two absolute terms that I smash down to the base ring. So what is this based on? This is based on taking an x-fold smash product of A. Well, if you uh, do this over R, you have the canonical map from R to A. So this is functorial, you get a map there. And then you just pull things to one point. So this is having the effect of instead of smashing over A, you now smash over R. Uh, sm smashing over S is replaced by smashing over R. So this is actually with a full crowd. So this is Halliwell, Höning, Lindenstrauss, myself, and Inna. Um, a second one is also due to the same crowd. Um, so I said we want to calculate higher THH, and we have this um, this formula for for doing this by this homotopy pushout. Um, but what I want to take now is a sequence of um, uh, co-vibrations of commutative ring spectra. And then I get a second juggling formula. I can't reach that thing. So um, if you want the next iteration step of THH, and I place coefficients, I take <coughs> algebra coefficients, I still have a multiplication here, then juggling tells me that this is the same as forming higher THH of A with coefficients in C, but now I have to form a more complicated push-out, namely I have to tensor over THH N, but now over A, and here THH N over yeah, B with C. So this is the second juggling formula. Um, so focus just, there's no A here. I'm just working relative to the sphere spectrum. You can take B equals C here. So this is actually then calculating full unreduced higher THH. And on this side, I have an, a second term of higher unreduced THH, but now with A, w which might be easier to calculate. And then the trade-off is that you have to understand these two relative groups, but they are one induction step further down, and they are relative. And working relative sometimes is easier. So this is the, these are the two first juggling formulas. And you can sort of take them together and expand. No, 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 L, you smash over A. No, and here you smash over B. So, the <coughs> yeah. So think about if this were algebra, and here you had the integers, and here you had a field, then these are easier, right? So, so the third juggling is is now sort of taking this all together. You can. If you want to know, so again, I have a sequence of co-vibrations. Don't worry about this. Um, and then I have a trade-off here. I can deal B for A. Yeah, I should place derived things everywhere. Um, this is actually de okay that way, but this might not be. Um, oh. 
So here, this is sort of the, the best you can get. So for all pointed, simplicial, finite sets, um, this is just taking all this together. And so you can juggle, you can replace a ground ring here by A and B, and you trade the suspension for just X. So this allows you to do some uh, inductive gluing procedures. Yes, uh, N, N is, yes, and that's, these are examples I will talk about in a few minutes. So X doesn't have to be connected, that's the good thing. Right, before I launch, in, launch into the examples, let me sort of tell you just the idea of the proof. Um, it's, it's really not that hard. So, So, just let me add a remark. If you take X to be non-connected, say S0, which is the, the case that we love most, then um, the module structures turn out to be quite intricate. So, uh, quite often you can calculate the, the single terms, then you get a Kuhnert spectral sequence, and you think you're done. Uh, but the module structure that you have, you're tensoring over THHN, so uh, this can be uh, quite difficult to determine. So um, let me just prove the most general one. So. Well, it's a sketch, but it, it, there's really not much more to be said. So you just stare at one diagram, which is really boring on this side. So you, have, you just have the identity maps. Um, So let me write it like this. This is really a push out diagram later. So um, and here we have the same thing here. What are the maps? Um, you have a map from A to B, from B to C. So here you just use these maps on, on this level. This is really just induced by the maps in the sequence. And then you have a multiplication map from um, any uh, Lodei construction on any space down to C just by multiplying everything together that you see. And this is something you can only do because we're in the commutative setting. Otherwise, this wouldn't work. Um, so you use a combination of these maps, so you get this. Well, um, what looks easiest if you take the homotopy push out? Let's start with the easy thing and the columns. Well, this is an identity, so you end up with this. Uh, this is also pretty easy. And then you have an identity as well, so you just get the last thing. And then with a variant of theorem 1, um, if you take the push out again, you just, this is the base point, so you get the suspension. 
So this gives you uh, the left-hand side of that thing there. Um, if you take it in the rows, it's more complicated. So, um, it, so let me focus on one thing. It, it, it's always the, this is easy, you just get the suspension as with the argument above. And then you get two relative terms. Um, here you collapse A down to C because this maps A first to C and then collapses it via the multiplication map. So this just gives you relative uh, THH, relative lot A of A and C, and down there you get relative lot A of B and C. And then if you form the homotopy pushout, this is hopefully what's there. So I usually forget an R, but that seems okay. So we get the, this gives the right hand side. And this diagram commutes, so you get the same. Why don't you prove one thing in every talk, so that was it. Um. <laughs> So let's do some examples, and this is where the meat is, where this is actually giving something. So I'll give you, hopefully I managed to give you two applications of this. Um, both are rather algebraic. Um, you, you also get something uh, for torus homology, but at the moment we can't really calculate this because of this module structure that turns out to be rather complicated. So. Um, So let me give you two algebraic applications. Um, so um, the first one is about higher order Schuckler homology. So Schuckler homology is just a derived version of Hochschild homology. Um, let me cheat and uh, give you a fake definition. Um, um, so if I have a map of commutative algebras, and here I mean really discrete rings, not spectra, then I define Schuckler homology of K over A as the homotopy groups of THH of the corresponding ironback maclean spectra. So, so the thing that gives you singular homology if you apply homotopy groups. Um, this is not the definition of Schuckler homology. Um, but the, the, the advantage is um, here you know exactly how you can iterate the, the construction. I uh, also define uh, nth order Schuckler homology now just as the corresponding higher THH. And that makes sense. And this turns out to pop up in several calculations. So this is higher order Schuckler. So um just 
Yeah, I mean, you have a spectral sequence calculating this, and this is probably the easiest way of seeing that this gives the right thing. So, I mean, <laughs> this was actually defined by Shukla in 1961. So he certainly did not use this definition um, uh, as sort of derived, um, what we would call derived Hochschild homology. So Hochschild homology of uh, DGA resolution. He defines something, but um, yeah, you are the expert. If Chuck says McLean defined it, then McLean defined it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pardon? Okay. I mean, do you mean the relative? Tor one or what one? Okay. Right. Um, so one sh thing I should say, in order to give you some context, this is actually isomorphic to Rothschild homology if k is a flat, and in in some of the statements I will throw in projective for good measure. Um, yeah, so this is uh, Shukla one. You can actually calculate in many cases. So, as an example, Shukla of the integers over z mod p gives you already something interesting. You get a divided power algebra with a generator in degree two where, of course, Hochschild homology just collapses. It's not derived. Zp tensor of Zp of the integers is just Gp, so you don't see anything but a point. So this is something that detects something. Right. Um, so even if you don't know what Schuckler is in general, except for this case, maybe, which sounds familiar, I would just tell you what it is for uh, com, com, um, for augmented algebras. So um, the theorem now is that uh, we actually know what this is. Um, so I don't need that k is a flat. I need the other thing. So, so I have an augmented a k algebra. Everything is commutative. ASK projective. Then um, we get that um, I can express Schukla homology just as higher Hochschild homology. So. So if I want to know what nth order Schuckler homology of a of k over a is, I have to calculate topological Hochschild homology one degree higher up of hk ha, but now with reduced coefficients, and 
that's it. And under my assumption that A is K projective, this is actually just higher order Hochschild homology. So some, something really algebraic. And that was defined by Pirashvili. So in particular, good old Schukler homology in this case is just second order Hochschild homology. And um, Okay, you can say here we, I, for Schukla 1 I needed two spheres, so this is bad. But um, just a remark, so this can be calculated for all n uh, in many cases. So if I have a polynomial ring, if I have a nice truncation, and or if I have, say, an abelian group ring, then we can write that down for all n. That there's no problem in doing this, it's just gets, uh, it gets huge, but you can actually write down a multiplicative basis. There's nothing. So in particular, you can calculate Schukla homology in these cases. Well, the proof is just juggling, so... Um, So what you do is you do HK, you, s the, you keep the first two equal, then you map, you, you take the unit map and then the augmentation map, and then X as SN. So you start with that one, uh, <coughs> because this is the suspended one, Then on the other side, side, you get a suspended one. So where is this? Well, but here you are relative to HK, and you take HK homology. So this just co collapses. Uh, and a similar thing happens in the denominator, where you get THHN of HK over HK. So this also collapses. So you can forget about these two contributions and you're left with, this was B and C in the old notation, so you're left with THHN, HK, HA, HK. So you can forget about these and this is left and then you have the juggling formula that gives you this result. Um, on a funny uh, note, coming back to Iraqli's question, um, even n equals zero is sort of uh, gives you a well-known result. Um, then you get, for n equals zero, you get ordinary Hochschild homology here. So you get the carton Allenberg result back that Hochschild homology uh, in the augmented setting is just Tor um, over A of K. So they proved this just using homological algebra. This is Schukla zero. Well, what should be Schukla zero? Uh, you attach the ground ring to the points of S zero, but you smash over the ground ring, so you get uh, HK smash HK over HA. So this shows up at these homotopy groups. So um, this is sort of ties in with well-known results from homological algebra. So. Um, so let me end with a different example. Um, that I want, that I should probably call the Tate example. What is the setting?
And this is now really working at the S0 goes to S1 interface. So second example is um, Tate. Um, so what is the setting? Take a um, regular local ring. Take A1, AR, a regular sequence. If I call M the maximal ideal, then I want that the A, I, R, in the square. And then I claim the following. Uh, so if you do THH of this regular quotient, with reduced coefficients, and here I actually mind, I mean the corresponding um, like McLean spectra. Juggling gives you that you can calculate that as a THH of the regular local ring with reduced coefficients, and then you end up just with a divided power thing. Um, on the left-hand side and there. Um, I need as many generators as I try to kill, but they are all in degree two, and I stick sort of to the Tate notation for, for this. Um, so the proof is really juggling So now you have S goes to HR, goes to HR quotient, goes to the residue field, and we take X to be S0. Then uh, juggling gives me that THH of this regular quotient with reduced coefficients is THH of R with reduced coefficients. And then I get two S0 terms, but they are just given by uh, tensors. So here I have to take A over C, so this is HRM, smash HRM, HR. And here I get the same thing, but uh, working relative to the more difficult ring. So if you stare at this, you get a Kuhnitz spectral sequence. And what you have is the Tor terms. And what you, the, the thing you have to calculate is this one. But Tate actually did it for us. So in this situation, so this is due to Tate 57 you get a bunch of exterior guys depending on the dimension of M. And then you get exactly these divided powers that realize that you try to kill something. But then it turns out that if you calculate the Tor term here, this is just the exterior guy again. You can choose the generators such that this is just the exterior guy with the same generators here. So they just kill each other. So on the homotopy groups, this is flat over that. So you just tensor up and you end up with this expression. And a concrete example is, um, is a well-known old example. So we recover a calculation of Z mod P to the M with reduced coefficients, this was well known, um, by calculations of Pirashvili, Morten Prune, by now Wiegleich Angeldweit. So this was calculated many times in many different ways. The good thing is now that we actually get 
uh, second order of uh, THH because these methods now allow us to understand the next juggling formula and the terms in the juggling formula because here it turns out that this splits into THH2 of the integers with Z mod P coefficients and then you get two Schukla terms and so this is the uh, reduced thing this is the easy one and here you have the more complicated one um, and then um, we know this for all n actually by calculations together with Björn Dunders um, this is the good old divided power algebra that I wrote down at the beginning of the last example. Uh, this is complicated because now you kill a non-regular element and this is bad, it creates a lot of noise, but you can just calculate this. For m equals 2, this was calculated by Bowers and Pirashvili and we sort of did the tiny generalization to do it for all m. And then you see again that in the spectral sequence you get um, uh, this is flat over, over that, so th these just uh, cancel and I mixed things up, so this was upside down, sorry. This is the big guy, this is the small <coughs> one, and this embeds into here, and so you can kill things. And this just collapses. So you get this result, it's very explicit, and you can apply this to other cases as well. Thank you very much. Well, the honest answer is right now, um, well, y you don't really need a field there, but you, you, I mean, here you do. In the other case, you need the augmentation. And then if you have something like R mod i to the n, this is rarely the ground ring of anything interesting augmented. So this is one problem. And so if I now tell you Bockstein spectral sequence, you cringe and yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we had this problem when we wanted to calculate higher THH of the integers and there we actually, we knew the thing, reduced mod P and then we had to work up. And I don't know any better way of, of doing it. Yeah? Is there a circle action on um, so, not with this model. Um, there's a more involved model by, now I get this wrong probably, was this Broom Carlson Dunders or the other lot? Um, so, there's a more jazzed up version. If you have S1 or you take a torus, you could cook up a version that's actually equivariant with respect to the torus section. And then what you actually can do is detect redshift already in the torus fixed points. You don't have to go, well, it's almost there, but I mean, you, <laughs> um, you can calculate the torus fixed point spectral sequence and, and get some redshift <coughs> detection there already. So there you wouldn't do the trace method, the full down to, to the torus homology but you lift up to the fixed points. Yes, so where, where do you use the <coughs> LMC AI data in the square of the black um, This is um, Tate's setting. I mean, you just choose um, a handicrafted nice resolution for calculating these Tor terms. And if you don't have this assumption, you're doomed. And you shouldn't have this because um, if m is 1, this is tiny, this is just the polynomial algebra on a generator in degree 2. 
So the complexity really comes from the fact that you take things that are not in the maximal ideal, but in the square, or it gets worse if you, yeah. So uh, M is at least two, and then things become, say, interesting. <laughs> so. Yes, this is plain wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, Tomo, is it? Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I, you are right, I, I'm, I'm just tired, so. Um. Yeah. This is the good guy, this is the bad one, and then you need Shukla. <laughs> <laughs>